Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Blake and today I want to talk about my X-Plane 12 setup on my Mac Mini. All right, so I'm running a Mac Mini with an M1 chip and 16 gig hard drive and a Samsung 49 inch curved monitor. Uh, my speakers are some old Acer speakers from uh, an Acer computer that I bought probably back in 2007, but they work. There's nothing wrong with them, no reason to replace them, right? So I've gone with the Logitech flight control system. Uh, it has the yoke here, plus the throttle controls here. And you have a few extra buttons here that you can make do different things. And the rudder pedals. Now, this throttle system plugs into the back of the yoke, and the yoke plugs into this powered USB as well as the rudders rudder pedals all right I read and it said use a powered USB because they draw a lot of power and there's the Mac mini so all of this equipment was all plug-and-play for the most part you can just plug it in and it will run on x-plane okay now there is a few different things you can do to make your experience a little bit better once you get that uh, plugged in as you can see here I have just one of my dining room chairs is my chair because my rolling office chair moves too much so I want it to be rigid all right so let's sit down here all right you see I 3d printed this little thing right here and screwed it into the top of the yoke so it can hold my keyboard now on my keyboard I primarily use the B for the brake to turn the brakes on and off the P for the pause button and the plus and the minus to zoom in and out and these two buttons here the up and the down to move your view up and down and to the side and that's pretty much all i use the keyboard for it's just nice to have it right here in front of you so one thing i did do when i came in here to settings you go into settings we'll start in general i've got it in english uh, let's see joystick so you can come in here and set up your joystick and this is all your controls for your yoke so you can choose what these different buttons do if you want to change them uh, I've left most of them how it came because it's just easier that way and you can just scroll down here and once you scroll there's my throttle set and two things I did on this throttle set is I took this four button and you can see I set it to reset flight to most recent start. So what happens there, say I'm flying around, I'm tired of flying and I want to take off again. I just push that button, the T1 top button, and it'll take me right back to the runway or to the approach, whatever I have uh, set up there. So that's one thing I did to save a lot of time and I really like that. And then the other one is down here, the eight. So the eight button, which is this button right here. I set that when I push it, it quits that plane. So this is the, the T1 is the restart button right here. Push that throttle out of the way. Reset and this one quits X plane. The reason I like that is because I am running on this Apple and it's not as powerful as a Windows computer because you can put a graphics, you know, a good graphics unit on a Windows computer, but you get what you get when you get this. So sometimes when you crash, it's a lot of times when you're crashing the plane's on fire, it will freeze up and it's a pain in the butt to get out of. So I put that quick button right there, boom, it quits it. You can just click back on it and get back in it really quick. Uh, Another thing I did here, you can see six and seven, which is these two middle buttons. I made those buttons my flaps up and down, okay? So when you set this up, these B1 and B2 are your flaps up and down. I took that away because it's too easy and I wanted to force myself to reach over here and do it like kind of like in a real plane right now i have to reach my hand over here off the yoke 
to put my flaps up and down, which works pretty well. All right, so that's pretty much it for what I have changed in here. So now I wanna do a new flight. So I'll come in here and pick my plane. I have my favorites is the Cessna Skyhawk and I have a Grumman Tiger, which I've purchased separately and uploaded it into the system. Uh, it's cool, but I don't like the sound on it. So when you're in the Cessna Skyhawk, you could hear all the wind noise and it's loud and you can hear your engines and you get, I like to fly by sight and sound. Uh, with the Grumman, there's not a lot of engine sound, so it makes it a little bit different to fly, but it flies pretty good. And there's like a man sitting in the front seat of the plane all the time, you can't get away from it. I don't like that, but the Grumman is a convertible and you can fly with the top back if you want to. Uh, so what I'll do here, I'll just do the Skyhawk and you can come in here and customize the Skyhawk and you can pick from different paint schemes, waves, X-Plane 10, I mean, just whatever you wanna do. I like this red one, so I always do the red one. And then you come down here and you can click this box to start with engines running. So when you start your flight here, it'll already be uh, ready to go. The engines will be running. All you have to do is let off on the brake, push the throttle and, and roll with it. Uh, and it just depends on where you want to take off from. So you can say right here, it's a start on runway 35. On runway, I can do at a three nautical mile approach or a 10 nautical mile approach. So you can either start on the runway ready to take off, or you can put it three nautical miles out coming in for a landing or 10 nautical miles out coming in for a landing. So what this says to the good one to do is a three nautical miles out. And what that does is help you practice your landings very quickly. So what I can do here is put it on three nautical mile approach. I'll come in and land the plane. And if I just want to practice landing it, I don't want to go in the full pattern because it takes forever. Uh, then once I land the plane and I'm good with it, I push that T1 down on my throttle set and it resets the simulation where I'm three nautical miles out, ready to land again. And you can just practice that over and over again without any delay. And it's really, really nice. So today we're gonna start it on the runway. Uh, we're gonna do clear, no clouds, and it's gonna be uh, 842, it doesn't really matter. We'll start here at the Kickapoo uh, Downtown Airport, KCWC. That is the airport that's right down the road from me. And that's the one I will be flying out of when I start doing my flight training. So we'll go ahead and start there and start flight. So here we are loaded up. Now we can go up here to the top right hand corner over here and you can go to the little toggle switches and you can go back to settings. Uh, the graphic settings, this is what I have my graphic settings at, running on this Apple M1. A texture quality medium, medium, right here in the middle. So the big deal is that the cloud, cloud quality, the clouds and the world object density is what is going to eat up a lot of your processing power. So you keep that down. Uh, rendering distance, we don't really need to be that far out because we can't see anyway. Uh, and vegetation density, just bring it all on medium uh, and you should be fine. If not, there would be a little pop-up over here and it'll tell you that the system's not running at optimum performance because your graphics processor can't handle it. So you, then you can go in here to your monitor configuration. All right, and you can choose windowed simulator. So if you just wanted to play it over here on the, so you can do a window simulator. So if I just wanted to play it over here, I can just play it over here in a window and I can make the window the size I want and I can have whatever else over here. Or you can do the resolution 
and you want to do the default. There's also a cue in here when you have two different monitors, which I used to have two 49 inch curved monitors set up that you can uh, turn one of the monitors off where it just doesn't simulate to that monitor. So say I wanted to have this set up here, okay? And I wanted to go over to the side and set up like, a, you know, the race car frame with a chair and everything. And I have my own screen over there, but I still want to run off this Mac mini. I just run the HDMI over here and I would take all my flight controls and I'd hook them all up over there but I would still have a computer screen here that wouldn't run the simulator, but it just run it over there on that screen all by itself. It's just pretty cool. All right, now on this lateral field of view, you can set it up to whatever you want it. I have it, what, at 119 degrees? You can use a non-proportional vertical field of view. And you can change the field of view. You can change how wide come out here you can change how wide you can see and how far up and down you can see depending on how much you want to see out here I think this right here it it works pretty good put keep it on proportional it won't mess up everything uh, you can, this lateral right here this lateral rotation offset and roll rotation offset vertical rotation offset all these are for when you have different screens they'll all be the same screen. It doesn't know that, hey, you have this screen stacked on top of this screen and this is what it needs to show. It'll all show the exact same thing and you have to offset each screen a certain degrees for it to all match up. You have to do that all manually. Okay, but only have one screen. You can make it to where it's always pointing this way or it's always this way or it's always this way and it'll save these settings every time you get in it. All right, so the keyboard, just keyboard setting you can go through here and it'll show you what they are, but I have all these other controls, so I don't need it. So I'm gonna go to done. I'll get out of there. We'll get back here. All right, so now that I reset everything, I set it to where my, it's not rendering as many clouds, which I have it on clear anyway. It's not gonna render as many buildings. It's not gonna render as many trees. It's not gonna go as far out, okay? So now we wanna fly this puppy. So like I said, I have this keyboard set up here. here. So I have it set up this We'll move this screen so I can look down. And you see, you can see the, the yolks are on there. So when I move this yolk, those yolks move, right? But I have one, a real one in front of me. So I see no reason to have those on there. So you come in here and you push Y and they disappear. It's pretty cool. All right, so we get that disappeared. Let's look back up, we'll toggle back up. On the back of this, there's a roller switch. Now I can flick it left and it looks left. Flick it back to the middle and I can flick it right and it goes right so you can look around very quickly. All right, so this button, the B button right here, I have it set up on a zoom. All right, so I can zoom in and out and look. And this is for your trim left and right, which I don't have on this plane, so I'm not worried about it. Like I said, I really love this thing that I made with my 3D printer that holds my keyboard up here. You set it up there flat or you can set it over here, but that just makes it easy to get to. One day I hope to put an iPad here that will have all my ForeFlight information. I just don't wanna pay for it right now. But one day that is the goal to be able to set my iPad here and have all that stuff right here in my face. All right, so what I would do here, get it set up where you want it. I like to come up in the cockpit and I like to be zoomed in about right there because I can see everything. Now the one thing you really can't see is this little right here and this is your map so you can just click on it and it pops it out okay so once it pops it out there's nothing here in this area anyway so I just set it over here and now I can see where I'm at all times it tells me where the airports are now you can take this and you can make it any size you want so you can make it it's one to 
and grab on the corner here and I can make it any size I want it to be. Okay? And all these buttons work. And you can change all the buttons and do whatever you want to this thing. I just stick it over here just so I can read a little bit better. And when you get a glass cockpit, you can pop that other glass out too. So all this is really large and you can see it a lot better. So what we're gonna do here, we'll go ahead and take off. Now over here, I have this set up. I have my air mixture up. This is not applicable for this plane. It just stays up and you can see them. If I pan down right here, right there. So if I move this red one, okay, move it, it goes in and out, okay. My throttle, I move it in, out, in, out. So I have it down because it's out and then you push it in and it goes in. All right, so now I'm ready to take off and I've tried to set the frame up where you can see as many of the controls as possible. It's really hard to try to get everything in the frame. So it's still back a little farther than I'd like it to be. So yeah, get my feet on the rudder pedals. All right, and let's go ahead and look. You can see the rudder moving there. We have different views here. Let me get the front view. This is just pushing shift and one of the numbers. You get all kinds of different views. So there's my rudders moving. And the ailerons and your flaps going down. See, I have that set up for my flap. So you have to reach down so it makes it as realistic as, as you can with the equipment that I have available. All right, got that going. And then you have your, your trim right here. This, this A1 and A2 is my trim. You can, I don't know if you can see it, but it's moving. I don't wanna move it back down. It's moving very slightly, it's hard to see. So look at all this, I can push the W and it'll take me right back to the cockpit. So now we're ready to take off. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to push the B. That takes off the brakes, okay? Uh, if you toggle down here, oh, we're the wrong way. You can see the brake handle right here. I push B, it brings it out, boom, it goes in. Now the brakes are off. All right, so now I come back up so I can see everything set up, ready to go. All right, give it a little bit throttle. Easing on up, it's going to want to veer left, so you're going to give it a little right rudder. I'm going to try to keep it right in the middle of the runway. Harder than it looks, I tell you. I'm no professional, I just play this game. You know? I've only flown a plane once, and it went pretty much like this. You know? So, get up here about 55, 60 miles an hour, and pull up slightly, and it flies. And there, we have taken off. All right, beautiful, right? So, we've seen enough of that. I'm gonna push the P for pause, and I'm gonna go up here to file, and I'm gonna go back to the main menu, and I'm gonna show you Okay, that we can do the same thing, same plane, and we can change this setting right here to a three nautical mile approach. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now we're loaded up at a three nautical mile approach. It is paused because I was paused when I quit last time, so it's gonna start in the pause position. I have my throttle all the way up, and here is the runway coming in for a three nautical mile approach. So you just push unpause, and here you are, take over the controls, and now you can practice your landings. So immediately start coming down here on the throttle. Try to keep lined up with that runway. All right, and you can let a little flaps down. Now the first set of flaps on the Cessna, you can let down out of the white and it's fine. And then once it starts coming down, you can let the other, you have two more notches of flaps. So you wanna to try to come in on the runway. Now I'm not gonna land it. It takes forever to land on this thing. So nobody wants to sit and watch that. So we'll just skip the good stuff and I'll show you. So what I'll do is I push 
say I landed, I'm ready to go, or I'm off, I'm getting mad, whatever, I crash in the ground. I just push this T1 right here. And it resets, boom, I'm right back where I started, and I can start landing once again. And it's that easy. They're just That's a quick setting that I put in there that saves me a lot of time, so you don't have to try to do the pattern. You're not going in and out all the time. You can just push that button and restart it, doing whatever you're practicing on. It really doesn't matter. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching it. And this is my setup here. Like I said, I used to have it set up with two screens and the Mac Mini really didn't want to run them. And the top screen was really used just to see the roof of the airplane. It didn't have any, there was no need for it. Let's put it that way, it was too much. So I just went down to one screen, set everything back up, and this is what I work with and I love it. I'm gonna try some new things in the future. I might get one of those little cockpit chairs and do that. I might hook this thing up to my projector and see if I can project it on a wall or into some boxes or something. Uh, we'll see later, but that's, that's in the future. But thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. See you on the next one.